I found out on May 31st that I had a brain tumor. And actually it was June 19th I had the surgery. But the period of time between those two, two and a half weeks um, were stressful. Each doctor we met with um, emphasized that this was, this was complicated and that it was risky and that there would be few people who'd be able to, to be able to perform a surgery like this successfully. I'm Scott Murray. I live in Virginia with my wife and five children. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and today I'm fine. You know, Scott uh, was a special patient in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, his tumor was challenging, and as a patient, he had already experienced some significant problems from the tumor. So for about a year and a half, my, my eyesight was, um, seemed like it was deteriorating faster than I, than I would expect. Eventually, I found an ophthalmologist who, who requested that or recommended that I get, a, get an MRI. Once he got the MRI results back, I, I was up till 3 o'clock every night for probably the next week, studying everything that I could find on the internet about meningiomas. We live in the Washington, D.C. metro area. There are a lot of fantastic hospitals, a lot of fantastic doctors. Um, but we realized as we went through it that this was an especially complicated procedure. And uh, the neurosurgeons we met with told us that you know, very few neurosurgeons would be able to perform a, a surgery like this and, and do so successfully. Of all the doctors that I went to, some just bowed out right from the beginning and said they weren't the right one to perform the surgery. And almost all said they wouldn't be able to get the entire tumor. Eventually I was put in touch with, with Dr. Carter at Mass General. Not only was Dr. Carter intelligent, um, experienced, but he was humble. He was um, confident, but he, he was aware that this was a complicated surgery. And when I think about any patient and how they are affected by their disease, you start to think about the reverberating impact on their family. It wasn't just Scott, it was actually his family, his spouse, Audrey, and the kids and, and everyone uh, that were going to be affected by this illness. Yeah, I, I remember clearly talking to, to, to one neurosurgeon, and I, and I remember saying, hey, you know, is, is this the kind of surgery, you know, being that it's complicated and so on, is this the kind of surgery that, that you enjoy doing? Because it kind of, it challenges your skills. And, and, and I remember he, um, you know, he looked at me and he said, Scott, no one likes doing this kind of surgery. This is the kind of surgery you stay up all night, the night before, worrying about what's gonna happen. Anytime we give consideration to, to going in and operating in and around these critical structures, we do consider it dangerous in some way, but that's where the team and the preparation comes in in terms of trying to really mitigate that risk and keep it safe. And all the decisions that we wanna make ahead of time, both before the surgery, during the surgery, and even in the recovery period are focused on that safety component. And that's one of the, the special things I think about the team that we have here. Um, we chose Boston um, and, and it was the right decision. Um, even though it wasn't close to home, um, the hospital felt like home. We appreciated that even though he has hundreds of patients a year, he treated us like we were his only patient. Uh, there, there are no guarantees in life, but we felt by, um, by going to Mass General um, that the odds were greatly increased um, that things would turn out the way we wanted them to. I remember um, when Dr. Carter came with his um, chief resident to tell me the news after the surgery. They came out and, you know, I just, I just wanted to hug him. I just thought, you know, you just you saved my husband's life. And um, that was a really, really happy moment. I felt so grateful. I felt like um, I felt like they were family. You know, I think in the future for meningiomas, uh, we will learn a lot through the sequencing and genetic analysis of these tumors. And it may be possible that in the future for a patient like Scott, we will be able to give them a medication that would shrink their tumor. Uh, for now, uh, surgery is the important element and tool that we have to, to treat that. We've had multiple MRIs, and, and um, I've obviously been, um, been living life like normal for, for months now. And, um, and as far as we can tell, it's, um, you know, it's completely gone. And, um, and truly, that's a, you know, that's a blessing in our lives. When we first got the diagnosis, all you want to do like the best gift in the world was just to be able to go back three days and just live your normal life. And so now like a year later, just to be able to live your normal life 
it's, you know, more than you could ask for.